Okay, just a minute lah. Going live. All right, folks, morning. Okay, so welcome to this session of SEO King Talks TV. And we have a lot of exciting news to share with you guys. A lot of exciting session series to cover uh, different, different ideas that can help you elevate your skill set and also your mindset. So today in particular, I'm helping Eugene to, to share some of the ideas about Jumpstart your hustle. So Eugene has kindly invited me to share about what it means to jumpstart your hustle. So this series, before I begin, is an ongoing series. There are a lot of different, different speakers uh, Eugene is bringing in from his network, uh, from marketers to trainers, uh, video specialists, all who are really experts in their fields here to share out of goodwill for the community. And we hope that this we're going to also thank Civil Service Club for hosting this experience for all of us today. And we hope that uh, their support can attract many much more, uh, much, much more talented people into the roster. And they can then share much more valuable things for you guys. And if you guys have ideas or topics that you feel will be really helpful to the community to learn, uh, please don't be shy. Just share in the chat or share with us later of Eugene. Who do you want to hear from? So it's a Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Uh, really thankful that we have a good turnout at such an early timing. I know it was really hard to get out of bed today. Uh, you guys are taking the time to come out from your bed and sit in front of the computer to learn and really applaud that for all of you guys. And I hope whatever that is shared today adds much, much more value and you walk up today feeling much more empowered and confident to tackle the day. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to share my slides and I'm going to dive straight into the presentation. And any point of time you guys have questions, please drop them in the chat. And we don't want this to be a lecture. This is not a lecture, guys. This is a conversation, particular conversation that we're having together. So you guys probably are seeing something new or you guys probably seeing something you have seen many times before. And that's fine. It's good to see the same thing differently. But what I'm doing is that I'm going to combine some new ideas and also some old ideas and show you how, when it comes together, creates a blueprint for you to jumpstart your hustle. So I hope you're really excited. And I hope you have a lot of questions for me today. So let's see if my slides. Okay, I just want to take a quick shot. Fantastic. So let me share my. All right, folks, if you can see my slides, you can drop in the chat or give me a thumbs up or do anything to signal that you can see my slides. All right, welcome to Jumpstart Your Hustle. So quick introduction of myself. Uh, Imran Shah, I'm a consultant, branding marketing consultant. I'm a trainer. I do train people on marketing, public speaking and branding and other soft skills as well. I'm a nerd. I'm a self-professed nerd. I like to read a lot. I like to, to unpack things. I like to... Uh, break apart things to see how things work, how systems come together. It's an obsession of mine and an obsession that I feel can really help you find new ideas. So I've been speaking online, offline, uh, local, overseas, uh, in the mountains, in the classroom. I've been very fortunate to have all those experience. And I'm trying to curate as much of those experience into ideas and inspirations for you guys to follow as well. So the topic today is jumpstart your hustle. Why is it that Eugene, you think, wanted to bring me today is because this is the reality. Once you guys look at this photo, I bet you can understand what's the reality today. It's a very simple photo, but a lot of ideas. Maybe let's hear from you guys. What comes to your mind when you see this photo? You can type in the chat. Retrenchment. So definitely retrenchment. And we're not talking about just one or two people. We are talking about waves of retrenchment. And I, I don't think I need to give you statistics to tell you the gravity of the situation, right? I bet when you open up your social media every other day, there are news about Twitter laying off people, Meta laying off people, Amazon, and all the other platforms live. They are laying off people by the waves, huge waves, because during the pandemic, just give me a context, during the pandemic, there was a surge of hiring of these tech positions. And it kind of bloated their, their systems, kind of bloated their companies. And because the usage rate of these services jumped like crazy during that period of time. So investors dumped their money into these companies and then they hire as much as possible. They grew insanely fast in a matter of one, two years. And when they got out of it, our behaviors change again and our demand for those service reduced significantly. And that's why you're seeing this, I will call displacement of people from these companies. And now displacement may, may sound a bit more gentle, but the reality is that they are also unemployed. And I think this is a reality that can hit any of us anytime because a close friend of mine as well was part of this situation. Wake up one day, Cannot log into this company email. Found out that he's been let go. That is the how how it can happen. Just like that, there's it doesn't happen whereby oh there's one month warning that you're gonna be let go. It can happen when you wake up next day and you realize you don't have a job anymore. So I think a lot of our friends, our family members have been in this situation, and some are fortunate. They have like the next job ready in line for them. Some of them have time to recover. Some of us are not as fortunate. Some of us have urgent matters to solve, like our bills. We have 
uh, responsibilities to manage and we don't have the luxury of trying to figure things out. So this jumpstart your hustle, think of it as something I would call like an insurance in case something happens and you, can, you need to react quickly, at least you have this keeping you afloat. So when I proposed this jumpstart your hustle to Eugene, my idea was not to tell you to build a business empire. <laughs> it's not to, to replace your job also, but it will definitely enhance your employability. That I can promise you. And I'll explain later on further what it means. But most importantly, some of us need an extra few hundred dollars. You have approached me before. Some of you need just that little bit 30, 40% income to make meet your payments, meet your bills. This is what this program is about. And from here, that point onwards, when you want to scale, then we will have a different conversation and the ideas needed for that. So I'm going to move forward. So my question is, why are you here? Why do you guys decide to wake up early in the morning to keep me company at 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning? There has to be a strong reason. Why are you here? If you don't know why you are here, then you will have a hard time swallowing what we're going to share later today. Maybe give it a thought. Give it a few seconds of thought. Why are you here today? Why did you choose to sign up for this particular session? And just share. We, this is a, a place for us to share comfortably. Explore alternative income sources. So we have one wants to explore alternative income sources. Side business, having passive income, learn something new. So let's see what else, what other ideas do you may have? We have exploring alternative income, we have side business, we have passive income, learning something new is always welcome as well. What are the reasons you might have? Exactly what I said, having a backup in case of retrenchment. Okay, fair enough. So these are very valid reasons and exactly why we should be here today because these are the things that we need to have some peace of mind as we progress through our different phases of life. Am I right? So I want to see what's your status today. So another one, high cost of living match income to expand. That's true. There's inflation is making our reality not as comfortable as previously. So what was enough for us previously, now it needs a bit of top up, am I right? So that's why you need this bit of side hustle. So what's your status? Maybe you can share with me. Are you self-employed in between jobs, employed or it's just complicated. Complicated, we have ready. Yeah, I know. Yours is complicated. <laughs> Employed but exploring in between jobs, complicated. I already have three complicated. Employed and freelancing. So the, the reality, if you employ as well, Again, there, there are statistics out there to share that the gig economy is growing massively to the point that the government is stepping in to create policies to safeguard your interests as well for the gig economy. So don't be surprised while you're exploring your side hustle, you might get additional support from the government to ease your load as well. So that could be happening in the near future. But part of this has already happened now. So quite a number of you are employed and complicated. There's a nice mix there. So let's see how do we uh, give the right message to both of these kind of folks. So I just want to give you a context. This is the best I think I can remember, or I didn't really quite track when I first started out, uh, the hustles that I tried. These are the notable ones that I can remember. There are other hustles I did. Oh yeah, I think I didn't write down some of it. But these are the prominent ones which I tried from scratch. So I remember the very first hustle that I, I think will be counted as the first one uh, was carousel flipping. That was really one of the hardest, but also the most fun. So what happened was that I was just speaking to my good friend, hey, bro, I want to go on a trip. 
uh, what do you recommend is a good skill set for me to invest in to make some quick cash. So he said, do you have a bit of two, three hundred dollars lying around? Uh, let's do carousel flipping. So I said, what is that? What, what do you mean by carousel flipping? Say, bro, uh, yourself, you're good in language. You can write well, you can take photos well. Go and scour carousel, find deals or people who are selling their items on a huge discount, buy it from them and sell it back again on the portal at a markup. So, so that's what I did. I did just bought uh, speakers, I bought bicycles, I bought computers, buy them, store them, and then sell back again. Uh, it sounds easy, but uh, there was a lot of challenge because you need to be a, have a good eye to hunt for the deals or hunt for the discounts. You gotta know how to negotiate and you gotta know how to write and take photos as well. So that was quite fun and also very, very challenging. Uh, that's where I met that this carousel, I realized is not, it is much bigger than what I thought. It's not, not just people selling secondhand goods. There are people who make their entire income or have their entire career centered around the flipping or centered around selling discounted goods, which is, can be mind blowing if you really put your time into carousel. So the issue was that I, I, I like to study how I earn my side hustle as well, or how I earn my income. So while the flipping was doing okay, but I was getting tired really fast because for flipping, the issue is your turnaround time, it means how fast can you buy and how fast can you sell? You need to be very conscious that you don't hold on to the money. So then I realized, hey, each day I can only make two to three trips to sell or buy. That's not very efficient. I compare myself, my friend, our skill set, we are not far off. We are on the same page, but he's earning four or five times more. Why is that? Purely because he can transact 10 times more than me. Because he has a vehicle. <laughs> That's the, the, the differentiator. So I study again. What is my limitation? I realize, hey, if I can't flip fast enough, I realize I browse carousel again. I realize, hey, why not? I rent out items. So I bought speakers. I rent out to people who are doing their wedding RMM. So they rent my speakers in the morning, they return in the evening. That I assume made me about 1,500 over three to four months before the COVID hit and no more wedding. So, but it was a good gig and it was growing really fast. I started one tiny speaker and I, was, I had about four in the end, end of four months. That's how fast we were growing. And it was about to go into 10 tage and all. So that was just $40, $50, $50, $50 earned per, per weekend day. And that is enough. Like I said, you just need that extra side hustle. And if you're talking about passive income, that was as good as passive income. I didn't do anything. They show up at my car park, I pass them the speaker, they pass me the money, and I return the deposit when they return me back. They don't return, I take the full deposit. So it was a good, good trade. Probably going to revisit this again. Uh, E-commerce campaign project was one of my freelance. Uh, why is it the number is a bit high and plus plus because I, I don't know what's the best number to share because I was split among a few people and there was profit sharing involved as well. So the number is quite quite lump sum. Uh, basically, we managed e-commerce Shopify and helped to improve their sales over a period of time. And that was very intensive, very high skill, very technical. And you might realize as you go down the list, the intensity kind of goes down as well, but the number is actually increasing. So for social media projects, I, I just made a poster. I told people, hey, I've been learning social media. I, and I approached a few friends. They decided to engage me and that was about the amount I earned over six months. Copywriting projects, every now and then people just tell me, hey, I need a few emails written. I need this written. So I get, charge them about 1,005, two or three projects. I can't remember exactly. I think it's going to be a bit more. Private coaching, I just started again this year. But one, two years ago, I did it. And I stopped for one and a half years. I'm starting again. And in three, four months, this is about income from private coaching. And if you think about the amount of labor involved, it goes down. Carousel flipping was very labor intensive. I had to go down to the place. I had to wait in the sun or at night, middle of the night all the way to private coaching where I have leverage, I control how I want the session to be like. 
So you will evolve over time when you dabble yourself with different, different ideas. But the most important thing is you need to be very self-aware. What are your limitations? What are your strengths? If you dive into either of these, but you never do any review, you will be stuck. And instead of becoming a side hustle, it becomes a side burden. So that's my tip for you guys. So the three goals for me today that I want to share with you guys, some of you are asking me, what hustle should I do, right? There's so many things. You see your friend do this, you also want to try it. So number two is after you really decided what hustle, to ask me, hey, how to get clients? Huh? So that's my job. I think a lot of people are scared to do their hustle because they are scared they cannot get clients. After your first few clients, you will hit this point where you ask yourself, hey, how do I increase my prices? Or how do I grow? How do I scale? Should I scale also? That will be the third part. So if you have questions along the way, I'll try my best to answer. And I will try, it's a bit technical because I don't want this to be very fluff or very airy fairy that, hey, you guys must work hard or you guys must think, you must have ideas. No, there, there is a strategy, there is a system that you must follow and then you will see the progress. This is not like you try your luck one, but really can work. So the number one question is, what hustle to do, right? There are so many things in the world. Simple. I need you to have this mindset of a CEO. Okay. How do CEOs think? Their job is to come to the office and make a few decisions. And their job is to find problems and solve problems. So the CEO job is to, to look at the market and see what are the new problems that are people complaining about. Your job is to listen to all people complain. You see, when your friend asks you for copy, then they ask you to, then they sit down with you, then they complain about the market, they complain about this, they complain about that. Your job is not to join them complaint session also. You sit there, you complain there for the next one, two hours, then that's not a CEO mindset. But if you sit down with them, they complain to you and you're taking notes about what they're complaining about. And then you go home, you talk to other people, hey, can any of the things that he complained about, I can solve or I can work on it. Then that's where you have find your starting point for your hustle. So you got to think like a CEO, your job is to find problems. What are people complaining about? Because the hustle is not going to drop from the sky and show itself to you. You need to go and find it yourself. That's what CEOs do. They go and find opportunities. And opportunities are just problems disguised. So they find what the, the gaps in the market. They try to solve the gap. That's where they make their money. And that's how I, I make my money as well. Because people complain that they, whenever they complain to me about some part of our service, I create a new solution. We sell it to them. That is how easy it can be. But it starts with this simple model for you guys. You're going to find your sweet spot later on. But most important of all, you must know why you're here, how you want to get there, and what. But mostly, we want to find the sweet spot. There's three things. I bet some of you have seen this before. The sweet spot. So most of us are in this area where we, we kind of know what we're doing. Let me see. So we are, we are doing something we are good at and we are doing something that pays us. So we are kind of here, most of us, I believe. If not, we might actually be here. Most of us starts from here. Why? And that's perfectly fine because you need the capital, you need the money to slowly invest into doing what you're good at. When you clear these two areas, then you start to find the income and the mental capacity to invest into doing what you love. But the issue is that most people start here. They want to do what they love. And here is most of the time no money. Let me try a different color. If you just focus on doing what you love. Unfortunately, there is not much money to be made here. So some of you will argue with me, hey, I can be influencer, what? I can sing online, what? I can, I can help my friend repair his motorcycle, what? I can do this as a passion project, what? Can I? It made a passion project. But then you say, hey, my friend, he, he designed, 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 suddenly he made a lot of money. So 
my question back to you is, do you want to be a probability or do you want to have a confirmed chance? So if you follow your friend, that means this one is luck. If you want to design your hustle based on luck, then this is not for you. Uh. But if you want to design your hustle based on a blueprint that is systematic, then you need to be patient enough to focus on what works first. That means to, because I've seen a lot of people who are really talented, they are talented content creators, talented videographers, talented reviewers, but they are not making money even though they are very viral, they are very popular. You can sit down with any of them, ask them how much they charge, how, how they're making money. They have no idea what they're doing. I probably might get into trouble by saying this, but that is the reality. I've I talked to enough of them to tell this. And focus on this area first, what pays you. Build up the income, then you have the peace of mind to focus on a skill. Invest in a skill that you think is close enough to what you're passionate about. Or a skill that gets you excited. Or a skill that you see the problems that people have been talking about, you can solve. For example, uh, I'm working on a new skill to manage uh, a new software CRM style, uh, to manage database and automation. And why I even bother about these skills? Because I've been doing lead generation of my clients. And every time I do my client review, a lot of them complain, uh, there are no leads. Then I say, but you have not even finished talking to these leads again. You have been burning the leads. You never do follow-ups. You never do, you don't even have a database of leads. You don't have a database of clients. So there's a gap there. And most market solutions for database is super expensive, tens or hundreds of thousands. So I want to create a solution that's dirt cheap for them and easy to use. Don't need 10, 20 stuff to use it. So that's the gap I realized after talking to many people. And I found out that I went to talk to more people to find the solution. And I'm working on it now because is I want it to be something that I'm good at. It's not exactly something that I love, kind of okay with it, the relationship, uh, but I'm only able to do it because I've been focusing on doing what pays me and I've been doing it well. So I've been mastering this side first. And eventually we're gonna reach here. So it's not an automatic journey, but at least you take out a pen and paper, you're gonna list down. What do you love? What pays you well? What are you good at? If you're lucky enough, when the intersection for everything to be, you find an intersection that matches everything and is doing well, by all means, focus on that. Don't try to be distracting with any other things. The, the issue with most people who are doing side hustle is that they have 10, 20 different side hustles. I'm guilty sometimes. So then I go remind myself, okay, cut down, cut down. Focus only two or three, or even one or so. Very fast when you embark on this journey, the moment you learn this skill, I will see a lot of people, they will have 10, 20 different side hustles. And that is a big problem. So I'm going to erase this. So that sweet spot is actually what I call your superpower. Means you, if you get it right, you are unstoppable. It means you go to any community, you go to any platform, you'll be number one there and you can demand uh, clients can demand the right price as well. So until you haven't reached that three intersection, it's hard to call it a superpower. That's why you're going to work on what pays you, make sure it's something you're really good at, and eventually find something that you love to be what pays you and what you're good at as well. Because sometimes I like singing. Okay, I don't really like singing, but I love playing the guitar, but it's not what I'm very good at. It doesn't pay me at all. I need to pay people to play sometimes. I want to play at the, the, the place. So it's not the best option. I like to write. I like to speak sometimes. Uh, I believe I'm pretty good at it. And people are paying me to do it. So that's my sweet spot. And I realized, so for my journey, I tried a lot of different things. And speaking and marketing is something that I realized even I wasn't People were not paying me for it at first. I had to pay to speak. So I had to earn money to eventually to train myself, to find opportunities to train myself. Because it's what I love, what? But there's no intersection yet. There's a disconnect. So over time, I realized I just keep focusing on it. And it became my own superpower whereby I realized, hey, people are starting to pay me instead. 
of me paying them to speak. So that thing will come over time when you start to refine your skills, start to focus on one idea. So constantly review what you're working on to be good enough. So number two is, remember the thing I see, oh, you're going to find problems that's out there. If you have time, just ask yourself this question, like what's your hobby? Uh, what people are asking you advice about? What organizations have been struggling that you join as well? What problems you solve? So ask these problems, answer these questions. That is your head start. There's actually a long list of questions I so ask sometimes, like uh, who asks you for help? Why they ask you for help? So a lot of reflection is involved. So I bet some of you are asking, hey, I can just do grab, I can just do tada, and as a side hustle. And honestly, there's nothing wrong. Go ahead. But if you want to find something different from what I just shared, like grab or tada, then this is the path. This is the, the process. So you got to list down all this, what are your ideas, what, what problems do you think they were trying to solve? And then you will find some breakthrough. So why is it that you need that superpower? Why is it you need a problem? And from there, think of three possible problems that you think need to be solved immediately. Because this process of elimination is very important. So why, why go through the trouble? Why not I just open up selling cakes tomorrow without planning? You can do that, but then I tell you six months of the road, you ask yourself, why am I doing this? Then you feel frustrated, then you give up. But when you have clarity, when it gets really, really tough, you can be patient enough to say, hey, it's okay, this is part of the journey. The conversation it sounds different, really. So why is this important? When you find a problem and you match it with your superpower, that is your new hustle. Your new hustle will be born from there. So when you have all the problems listed out and you narrow down to the problems that you want to solve and as well as the sweet spot, that is what you should be working on. There are additional steps like if you have the time, don't just jump on the hustle, measure the profitability to time as well. Like why show you the list at, at first. Carousel flipping, the profitability was low, the returns, the effort was very high as well. As I go down the list, profitability high, effort medium. So they kind of Match, match you're going to do as well but I can't squeeze it into this presentation because there is another half an hour or one hour uh, technique to share with you guys how to measure <clears throat> so we're not done yet you're going to create your first offer so what is offer so don't be surprised not just people who are hustling even businesses they don't they can't tell me what's your offer because I work with some folks I tell them so what exactly is your offer you can't tell me. For example, I work with uh, a coaching coaching center. And I asked them, so what is it you're offering? They said, offer coaching. Ah. So what is in the coaching program? Uh, just they get to coach with me. Ah. I teach them things. They are not clear. They're not clear what they're selling. So then you might argue with me. But then I'm just selling uh, nasi lemak. Why am I think about offer? Ah? My offer is a nasi lemak. Lah. So that itself... The ikan bilis, the, the rice, the sambal, the chicken, the wrapping, the delivery, the update, the service. That is your offer. When you are clear what's your offer, you have an advantage unlike any other. Because majority of people are on autopilot. They are on autopilot when they run their business, they run their houses, autopilot. They never check. Is this offer make sense? So when I ran my speaker rental, I didn't just say, you borrow the speaker, return tomorrow. No, I had to specify, include delivery, include check. I, I add details, how to use a speaker, how to contact me, what time is my delivery, if lost, what to do, if damaged, what to do, why is there a deposit? I, I go down there, I show them how to use it. There is my offer bundle. I solve the different, different part of the problems of that one challenge. And if you already have an existing offer, just quick tip. The price of your offer, the value of your offer will increase when you get to solve the level of problem. So let's say I'm selling nasi lemak. To one person, I'm solving the problem of maybe Eugene hungry, 
I solve his problem. But let's say Eugene has a problem where he wants to post a gala. Me solving, it's not longer about, let's say I want to sell 100 nice it's no longer about selling, trying to solve Eugene being hungry anymore. It's about Eugene being able to keep his guests happy. Because if his guest is happy, they will continue doing business with Eugene. And they're going to pay him a lot of money. That's why he's willing to pay me for 100 nice and pay me more as well. Because I get an additional service. I expand the scope already. Time invested. Uh, yes and no. I realize this to not always be true. Sometimes we believe that we must spend more time with the client or the customer to earn more money. Uh, as you go up to your skill level increases, sometimes this is not always true as well. I bet you heard the story by this technician. He repaired a submarine in just half an hour. And he charged the company $10,000. And they argue, why is it like that? All right? So, list all the problems, list all the solutions, rank them against each other. That's all. So now, come to the part, how to get a first client. Again, guys, no one's give a shit about what you have or know until they know what you're doing exactly. So if you keep it to yourself, you keep quiet about what you can do, then it will not be a hustle. It's just a passion project. Passion project not going to be a Helping you pay your bills. It's just going to drain your bills at stay. Bleed you more money instead of making money. So here's the issue. A lot of us are trying very hard to find customers. So they go hunt. They go hunt. They go to events. They don't know what they're doing. They just post on social media. There's no strategy. And then they panic when people don't approach them. It's expensive and it's not recommended and it's demoralizing, especially when you use advertisements, when you use uh, things which you're not familiar with. So this is what I call the five steps to becoming the cheese. It's inspired by Russell Brunson from Expert Secrets. So step one, you got to dream. Imagine what is it that you want to be your end goal. You want to be expert in selling nasi lemak. Okay, then that's your goal. That's your vision. You want to be nasi lemak caterer. Then, that means you need to, to study everything about that particular industry, that particular solution, that particular challenge. Study, 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 study. Learn as much as possible. And start talking about it. Start sharing with people about it. Discuss with people about it. Meet the experts. Talk to them. Then, once you have all the knowledge and information, frame all the knowledge. Start to organize the knowledge start to give it a frame for all the ideas. For example, if I'm selling, uh, I want to go into the systems industry for, for audio technical industry. So I'm going to learn about lighting, I'm going to learn about systems, uh, controls, learn everything about it. Then organize, okay, this is knowledge. This is how I can set up for a wedding event. This is the speaker system set up for outdoor venue. This is the speaker system, organize the knowledge. And that's how I started from renting out speakers. I started out a side hustle to do live stream. I built on that existing knowledge of speakers and live stream like this. I offered a service for wedding live stream. Just make that switch because I organized the knowledge. It now looks at an offer. When people ask me, I can advise them, oh, this is how you do wedding live stream. If I do this for you, this is my price. So that was a transition. It wasn't anything magical. I didn't have to go for extra class. I basically organized the ideas. Then serve. This is the part where people don't like to do. This is the part where people hate to do. Serve means your first few clients, you're gonna you're gonna lose money first. Because you're gonna experiment, you're gonna get your reviews first, you're gonna get the feedback first. So offer help for free or a huge discount first for your first few clients. It's supposed to build your confidence first as well. Get your feedback. Refine your offer. This is the step four. Then you will become the guide. You become the go-to person. Let's say <clears throat> some of you want to be, uh, for example, a you want to be known for repairing motorbikes. You help a few friends. You tell them, hey, I'm going to help you either for a huge discount or you just cover the main cost. I, service is free. As a favor, maybe you can help me uh, spread the word online, spread the word among your friends. So that you remain top of the mind. And then when the next person has a problem with their motorbikes, 
they're going to ask around in their group chat, they're going to ask their friends, hey, who can help? And their friend will say, hey, why don't you ask this guy? He got help me that time. So you become part of the option already. From being invisible, you are now in the radar. That's how fast you can go into the radar. Especially if you've done a really good job, you'll bump up into the radar even faster and you get closer to the person. So, it's all not fluff, like I said. Here are some tested methods. Huh? <coughs> influencer marketing. This is if you have a lot of budget. Huh? You can find influencers, pay them amount to promote your product or service. Contest. This one, a uh, hit and miss sometimes because for contest, uh, there's a bit of expense involved. And the returns, if you don't host a contest well enough, you don't spread the word well enough, it's a loss as well. But contest is a good way to build a database. They share or they like or they follow or they share an email. That is your database capture. That's the first we do contest. Is that database, you can actually just talk to them again, ask them whether they're interested in your service or product another time. Challenge. Uh, challenge is for specific industries you can do challenge. It's really up to your creativity. This is a bit more creative side. Let's say you are selling Nasi Lama, you can't be challenged by buy Nasi Lama every day. Right? It can be challenged by, uh, you tell them, okay, if you can buy at this time every day at 7 a.m., you get a discount. Or if you can follow my recipe and cook at home on your weekend and you post, you show me, then you get a discount, something like that. So challenge a bit more fun, uh, free and easy. Webinar blueprint, like what I'm doing here, is also part of it. How I get my clientele as well. So I need for grow, I need for skip. That is how uh, people, some of it are free speaking engagement, but the folks inside, they'll call me later, hey, I have this problem, can you solve? What's your rate? I kid you not, this one worked very fast. Especially for my industry. Uh. It opened over and over again. I don't need to go and create very complicated campaigns. I just show up, I share. Out of 20, 30 people, five call, one close, I make, I make my returns. That's how you gotta know your numbers. This one. I don't know where I can share this, but these are really amazing people. I just share, I do free audit. Free audit, and then they call me, bro, I'm interested from the audit, we close the deal. Or even if they never close, I ask it for review, I ask it for feedback, I improve my audit, I improve my visibility. So there's no loss at all. And I join communities. In the communities, I just talk to them, I ask them, hey, what issues are you facing? So for example, I join uh, communities related to tuition teachers. I join them for dinner. As I talk to, I never talk to 100 people, by the way, guys. I just talk to three to four people. I say, hey, how's everything? Oh, uh, how are you getting your customers? Or oh, is it this? What's your strategy? I talk to them a bit in depth. I really want to know what they're doing. Be genuine about it. And they like that kind of conversation. After that, they will call me one week later. Hey, uh, I want to follow up with our conversation. Where do we go from here? And these are real proof, real people. And some even give me a second referral after that when you work with a community. So that is how fast you can get your first client. You just go out there, help people first. That's why I say you gotta build up your cash flow. Don't jump into this when you got zero cash flow. Because upfront, you're gonna spend a bit of money and I don't want you to be panicking about the returns. The worst thing is you are doing this when you don't have even the proper cash flow means think about how you want to increase your active income. Maybe take on more hours at your job, uh, look for a second job first, build up the active cash flow, then you have that cash flow to burn to build this side hustle. You can't do this side hustle with starting with zero cash flow unless it's a skill base. Skill base where you advise, design, or you pay for people, then you're trading your hours for time. Then, okay, possible. But then it's never net zero cost. There's only some resource involved, transportation. I know people do massage. So massage, the oil, the transportation, that is what the cost is. So have a, a float, at least a bit of cash that you can put aside for you to do this hustle 
without eating into the rest of your expenses or else your your mind is not at peace you cannot do this properly because even if there's a there's a request from a client you realize you got to pay up front in order to service them so you wouldn't want to be stuck in that state i've been stuck many times because i want to deal with software i want to level up my offer i'm going to buy some really expensive software to build the the item but after a few times i realized okay i need to have a 3 month cash flow to pay for the software because i need to get the clients to fill up first so this strategy involve the higher the ticket of your hustle the more planning is involved in terms of your cash flow your runway how fast you get your client start to sound a bit more like a business but it's almost like that if you are working for a small kind of hustle like selling a bit of food products uh, massage service it's just you yourself then your cash flow as long as you know the number what is your expense for the next 2 3 months to sustain that cash flow then that's good enough so that that is the idea itself at this point any guys any questions yet before i share the next portion <coughs> i know got quite a lot of things to process ah <coughs> uh, imran yo uh, sorry uh side track i just want to ask you what was the one before the contest blueprint there was one slide before the contest blueprint the contest before the contest let me Uh, influencer marketing. Okay, yes, thank you. So, if you already have your business or your side hustle already working, things are already you have a clear idea. Now you want to increase your customer bit. So this is where you hit the crossroad. I know people who do the side hustle, they do it so well until they start hiring people. So that's where you gotta ask yourself: Is this still worth the effort? because is when you start hiring people is it still a side hustle because you're managing people really uh there's management involved all the ideas involved if it's already very good system then by all means you can go into multiple layers but if you think you just want to keep it side hustle without eating up into your family time into your rest time then you're going to manage your expectation it's not going to be three thirty thousand dollars kind of side hustle but it's going to be enough to offset your additional expense so you already have this working you already have some clients some customers now you want to take it further you feel like hey i'm getting good at this i'm getting to be able to do this faster i want to get my fish i don't want to do small fish anymore i want to do slightly bigger fish lah the one you can bilis anymore i want ikan uh, what bigger fish ah ikan bawal yeah bigger fish ah ikan gurame so taste a bit better they pay me a little bit better I don't need to do 100 clients I can do 20 clients. So that's where you need to build your authority. So authority is not about you it is not about becoming popular, it's not becoming famous. So I just want to clear this that do not be confused authority and popularity. I have friends who are very popular online but they can't sell. Even when we talk about social media, they have hundreds of thousands of followers but they can't sell they can't get a client for social media itself so authority is is where you can confidently provide an offer and solution and communicate that solution not tell them i'm popular you want but you want me to do work for you or not you want to become popular that's a difference ah so i want you to know how to be authoritative not popular and that is true one of the method is i use social currency so presence means I find communities that I think might benefit from what I do. So, for example, I was doing social media for this coach, and this coach, their social media was not doing very well. Okay, fifty-four reach, take them three months. So I went to study hashtag quality visual timing posting trending all of that, and. We got sixty-eight reach of views in one day. What they took three months to achieve in one day. Then, yeah, definitely I did a good job. There's nothing wrong. But if I want to push it further, I realize that there are people who are doing much better with lesser effort. 
and this one of the guy, uh, this guy, he didn't optimize anything. He just write whatever he feels like. This girl as well, she didn't do anything extra, but she gained 10 million followers in 10 days. Why? Because these folks, they add value to their offline work. They add value to their community. They really solve the problem. And then these people will naturally want to follow them. So presence is your ability to spark conversations online offline. So when you enter a community, help them out with that particular niche. Help them out solve problems. Take up uh, positions as well. Then you realize that your presence will increase because you get invited to more community. You get to pitch your product. It will come to a point where people will invite you to pitch your offer, your solution, and your product. And you don't need to hustle as hard anymore. Your hustle is more about trying to negotiate what are your terms now. So this, again, that is what he's been doing. He did visit Hollywood. He's inducted. He's fully wishes. This is effort, downtime, offline. And that is why when he posts anything online, he jump like crazy. I'm not saying you need to neglect all the optimization, but I know you guys are too busy to do that. You got no time to follow up, keep up with all the optimization one. It will take up too much time. If you want to really optimize one video post, it take you two to three hours one. Am I right, Eugene? You tried it for us, right? Yeah. Very, <laughs> very right. <laughs> two to three hours. That is your only time you have for your side hustle. Are you going to burn on that one post? Doesn't make sense. I'd rather you focus on giving good value and then go to the community, help them as well, so that they will become your customer base. And then they will refer to their friends, know how to refer to each other as well. So, you know, these three ways. Never like big fish, add value, collaborate. Number three is super important. So, community, introvert network, community of learning, I share and share and share, they'll give feedback. They'll say, hey, come and share on another platform. Oh, why don't you share in another group? That's all I've been doing. And it's worked like magic. Because I don't care about my likes and followers. I just focus whether I am showing up consistently to share. Even today, me and Eugene, we are not uh, discussing about how many people really should sign up. We just share that, hey, my focus is did I prepare a good presentation? I decided to Eugene about who's going to come and everything else except for numbers. Because we know if it's valuable enough, the few of you that's watching this will spread the word for us. Because that is the value of social currency, right? And we got it on live stream. So you can watch the replay at seoking.tv. <laughs> yes. So it's there already. We don't need to be worried. That is the post event views again. We can worry about that. You got a question, I think. Oh. So join small communities. I don't encourage joining huge communities because it's hard to make your presence felt. If it's a small growing community, quickly join. And this has been my strategy a lot. I joined a small community, quickly uh, showcase my talent, showcase my niche, build the presence, become the top leader for that particular skill set. And that's how I track the, the deals from there. This is, applies for everything from automotive, food, online skills, design skills, be the top leader for that particular skill set. Tell them I want volunteer, don't wait for them to ask. Tell them I want to take over that particular role. So the working group have been very, very well. Uh, one of these has been BNI. Uh, they, their social media presence was really, really bad. And I volunteered. I didn't ask for payment. I even involved my team to design for them, update the designs. And that actually leveled up my credibility and be a top leader for that trade. Not just within my chapter, but not just within my group, but other chapters as well. People are, from other groups are coming to me to ask me to help with their social media. So that is how powerful it can be if you just keep your head down and focus on giving value to the community. And this is my TikTok. I started having no idea what, how to do TikTok. Uh, I've been doing videos day and day and day and day. Now I already crossed 110 videos, I think. And that actually, my views when I first started out was like 
10, 15, 20. That was what I was averaging. I People were laughing at my videos. They say I do it wrongly. They say I never optimize. They say I look silly or I never speak properly. All the negativity that you can think of, I was getting that for the first 30 videos. When I crossed the 50th video, a few people reached out and said, hey bro, I like that you are sharing. I like some of the stuff. After the 70th video, one or two start to approach, hey, can we have a meetup? I want to find out more. And when I cross 100, people are telling me, hey bro, you are inspiration. And I didn't change a single thing about my video. Ah. It's the same crap I put out in the first video and, and it's just 100 videos. What's the difference is that the consistency and the quantity, the volume. When they see you show up 100 times, that shows that you are serious about what you're doing. If you put up three, five, then they will see, hey, lousy, lah. then their impression, this person lousy. But if you put up 100 times, 200 times, you'll see this person is trying very hard to educate us. He's showing up consistently. I'm sure you see people, hey, uh, I believe some of you have seen uh, your friends who just joined insurance industry, just joined real estate industry. Your first stop is like, hey, this guy nonsense. Ah. He suddenly overnight become insurance agent. What can he talk about? First week, that's what you say. Second week, that's what you say. Third week, he say, I got my first client. He say, hey, this guy nonsense. Lah. First client, offer his cheap money one. <laughs> then, six months down the road, he got five clients. He say, hey, this guy, I don't know, probably he asked his father, mother to give him clients one. The impression still there, ah, negativity. One year, he got his first award. He say, hey, this guy, okay, not bad, I try. Probably got some breakthrough. By the third year, you say, maybe this guy legit, I should call him. I need help with my insurance. So time in the game also matters. You need to give yourself time in the game. When I started this TikTok account, I only give myself that. I just say, I just give it time. It will work itself out. I don't need to care about people's opinion. Time in the game, I know if I keep doing this long enough, people will say, hey, this guy know how to do TikTok. Do I know how to do TikTok? I'm the same as what the first video it was. I never changed anything. So if you're embarking on a new skill, a new trait, the first few attempts to get clients, people are going to think negatively of you, like you just try to cheat their money. But over time, the impression will change. Eventually, you reach a point by they want to give you money. They feel privileged that you are helping them. Bro, that's the reality nowadays. Huh? I'm not kidding. It is the truth. Last time when I want to help, they laugh at me. Hey, bro, don't cheat us money. Huh? Now the comments say, bro, thank you for helping, bro. It's because I give enough time, I give enough consistency. And I focus on the sweet spot as well. All the things I mentioned earlier. I try not to distract myself with all the shiny objects that come with it. And collaboration is super important. I am a big believer of collaboration. If there's any way I can help other content creators, other companies, other people, using my skill set, using my knowledge, ideas, experience, I'll be the first in line because that is how fast the word will spread. Let's say Eugene has his community today. Yes, maybe 20 people listening in. Now I don't need to go out there and find 20 people. I set aside two, three hours today and two, three hours preparing the slide yesterday and I get access to that. And these are warm compared to find 20 people trying to convince them. I got 20 people today who are, who Eugene, has put me in a good light and Eugene has given me the platform to share with with good with your attention and your permission as well. Compared to go out there, I need to pitch one by one, one by one, one by one. This will take forever. I'll be tired and probably I'll fail as well. So collaborate where you can. Now, does this apply for offline products or other kind of service? Yes. Let's say you are selling, you are servicing motorbikes. Look at the workshops, can you work out a deal with them? Or look at those who are selling the, the bike products. If you're not selling the oil, not selling the sticker decal, the helmet, work out a deal, collaborate with each other. And don't discount social media as well. I mean, you need to be visible somewhere, right? You need to promote somewhere. Show up consistently. It will attract attention. People feel that, I think a lot of people have limited belief that you must be the top of the line before you can do this as a side hustle. I, after doing this for many years, I can tell you it's not true. 
the 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 bar is very easy to clear. But the rule is that just don't cock up. As long as you just do what they ask you to do, that's enough. So I talked to quite a number of people. Uh, and my mentors as well, they give me the same advice. You know, if they ask you, Imran, I want 20 posts for social media, for example. If I go there and tell them, hey, bro, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you 100 posts. It doesn't mean they're going to be happy. Because I'm trying to force them to take out something they don't want. But if I say I get 20 posts that are really good and a bit more videos and um, maybe system, then it'll be okay. But never give them 10 posts. So it makes sense. But even if I don't do that, I just say, okay, 20 posts, I get 20 posts. Done deal. You're not going to complain also. They say, okay, good job. So don't be too excited to over deliver to the point whereby you're burning yourself out as well know what is good enough for them and focus on keeping it consistent focus on your system side hustle is just like your business as well people running business it's not meant to be super exciting all the time if you find yourself getting excited all the time uh chances are you might get burned out very fast but if you find that it's very very automatic very monotonous very systematic then you are on to the right side hustle i know it's countering what many people are preaching, it must be super fun, exciting, but you will burn yourself up because you will explore too many new ideas. The, the part about side hustle and many business, your job is to create a few good products and just keep selling them over and over again. Your job is not, not to create 100 products and try to sell 100,000 times. So even myself, I tried to, this deck today is recycled from previous time. I think Eugene seen this before also. I just tweak a bit here and there, then I present again. I'm selling again and again and again. I probably will create another new deck for different conversations. And sometimes when people ask me, hey, Imran, can you do a <coughs> class on TikTok marketing? I will say no, because that means I need to create a whole new product, whole new program. And it's not something natural for me also, so I reject. I focus on what my strengths are also. <coughs> so again, I like from the very first start, I say, focus on what you're good at, Reflect a lot, review a lot. Don't say yes too fast as well. Remember, this is your side hustle. So you should not be rushing as well. So the collaboration, like I said, lead me to one thing, to another, to another, to another. And yeah, that has how I've grown. I, I do reach out to other people to offer <coughs> to help them as well. Other people have been reached out to me to use my network and platform to promote them as well. We do that as well. We need to keep doing that. This is not limited for people who are content creators. I'm telling this for business owners in general. It's for people who are doing side hustle in general. You need to get the word out. If the word is not out, the money will not come out on also. So another one I joined is, let's say grow. I joined straight away. Uh, I saw the first one, two months, they have speakers. Speakers are their own members. So I messaged the founder, hey, I noticed that you are, you have speaking engagement and you might be looking for some as well. This is my profile. How do you think I can fill up one of your slots? Because I know they confirm need people to speak. Especially when they're new, everybody still feel like, hey, I don't want to speak on that platform, ah. like not enough audience, not enough people. But that's why I tackle, I come in straight away. Hey, I know you don't have the audience yet, it's okay. I don't charge anything. Line me up for the next speaker. I sign up and that's how I become the thought leader. And it's very crazy because when I did that and with other platforms as well, which are very new, I did it when I went new. So I share a case study. Happened just last week. No, two days ago. I was in another community which again, I joined at a very early stage and I helped a few people there. Another expert joined about six months later. This guy much more expert in me, I believe. He has much more presence, he's more popular, he has the perfect formula. And within that chat group, the person, or what, there's someone asking, hey, who can come and workshop to teach about branding and marketing? Everybody went to ask this person. They tag him in the chat group. But any day, I was the one that got the final call because I was the first person to strike out a deal and be the top leader. 
So because I built a relationship with the founding members as well. So relationship, networking, community, when you make your presence, they will be the one feeding you in the long run. It's not about how you're popular as well. Even the most popular people I've seen in these groups, they don't they are not the ones getting the deals. So I hope I've I adjusted your mindset about how to work around these communities as well. When you are happy to help, they they can tell as well. You're here to help. You're not here to exploit them as well. You're here to have fun, showing them how they can improve. That's where your passion will show. What I'm not saying you do this without passion. Your passion will show when you come and help with wholeheartedly. So, just a bit of sidetrack. If you still don't have online revenue, uh, compile your assets. Let's say you do a talk. Let's say you you do work for a customer, take photo, ask for review. Collect all this asset, and then that will build your portfolio over time. Because your asset, you can use over and over again. Then, when you have more time, uh, build a system. Let's say you do your side hustle. Starting, you do on, on your pen and paper. Migrate to your phone. Eventually, use an Excel because you need to keep track of your side hustle. Then, let's say compliance is legal. Last time, they pay you pay now. When you want to work with UG, let's say for his catering event, start to pay, uh, pay someone to do a proper invoice, so that you can protect yourself as well. I see most of my work I just use PayPal. It's good enough. I craft my own terms, but I know that also limits me because I cannot work with bigger organization. I have to reject actually. Some bigger organization have approached me to do systems or coaching. I have to reject because I say I don't have the proper compliance to service you. And I'm I'm okay with it because I don't plan to work with such big client as well. So that's all for today. I bet you guys have questions. If my request for today, if you guys learn something really useful today, share one thing that you've learned and tag on any platform it can be Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn, or even TikTok, because that is one way you can get your visibility out there as well. When you tag me. I will repost. You get your visibility out there, and the way these systems work is they promote cross pollination of content. Whereby if you tag each other, they will multiply your views. They will not add. So that's why we really encourage tagging each other in our content. You will see me, Eugene. We like to tag each other a lot. We tag other people a lot because why are you not doing that? They already giving you the the tool to grow your visibility very fast, and we are not using it. And I think one thing I want to add to Imran that is very close to my heart is really passion. Ah, uh, like what Imran said, you no. Know, when you have passion, you can see through. So that is exactly what happened. Is I have the passion of digital marketing, search engine optimization, and I realized out there people are teaching all the wrong things. So I told myself I should start a YouTube channel. So I start a YouTube channel. Initially, there was only one subscriber, two subscriber. I keep pushing on. I keep pushing out the videos. I don't care. I I tell myself, you know, even if one person is watching, that is my audience. I will assume that a thousand people are watching. I keep on pushing out, and like what Imran say, I keep on pushing out what we call is value. What we think that ah uh, the video that we push out could solve a problem. Even if one person solve, that's objective met. And I keep on pushing out, and you know, I I have my YouTube channel for about two years now, two and a half years, and now you know, I've 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 got like like um, maybe about three hundred videos there, and 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 probably I I I managed to get about eight hundred subscribers, right? So uh, and obviously right now is really giving back to the community, you know. We 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 thank Civil Service Club for. All these opportunities, and I have also lined up fantastic speakers along the way. So, if you have registered for this Zoom, what will happen is that if the next event, ah, uh, I think it will be somewhere in June when I I I will update this Zoom ID, and you will get an email on when the next event a, a actual date and time is. So, if you can make it, you just make it. So, so we make it in such a way that once you have registered in the Zoom. Uh, subsequent events, we will just inform you through email because I'll use the same Zoom ID, and your e- your email will say that oh okay this event has changed, which is the next event. So, uh, we we're hoping that uh basically having a community, having 
um, a very closely knit community where it's all about digital and like what Imran say you know I I really uh, got in quite a number of people and also I I I I've, I've streamed this uh, amazing talk on seoking.tv so you can really watch it I think at, at, at this point in time let's let's take a couple of questions if any one of you have any questions uh it would be nice to also uh if you can unmute yourself and if you can on the video also that would be nice so that at least we can see see you and interact with you let's let's take a couple of questions since uh you know imran and myself is here uh yeah let's do that and uh one more thing to share when i started my youtube channel i expected nothing and i shared on my facebook and all that and i managed to get a client uh, which is candy electronics they are a electronic company in uh, Europe. They have Singapore representation. Uh, they they sell you know like washing machines and all that. And I was I was doing uh, their their social media management campaign for them, just because I decided to do my YouTube channel and I share on Facebook. Somebody recommended me to manage their clients. That's how powerful it is. Like what like what Imran says, social currency, right? You. <laughs> You will never know when the video people will just watch it and it will just kick in just like that, right? So let's have some questions, right? Anybody? I saw a couple of friends here, many many friends also that have joined. Any any questions that you want to ask, like how to start and all that? Like, uh, is there anything? So so. I think the guiding principle is first ask yourself what you are good at. Mm. Uh, what you're good at sometimes it, it doesn't make money, but it's okay, right? Uh, then you realize that okay, what you are good at, then you know what 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 do people need? Start with this conversation first. What you are good at, what do people need? And then you see is there any gap? And like what Imran say, if you need to kind of uh up your skill, then take courses that you can up your skill in that area. And then you can kind of provide the service. The first few service will be <laughs> not so good, but but anyway, it's okay. It's a learning point, and you just carry on, right? Are there any questions? So just to add, Eugene, uh, for folks who are actively sharing about this experience today, uh, I'm offering a brand audit or basically a free coaching session for the first round uh, for them to find out what is it that they're good at or what can they do. This is what it looks like, a really thorough session to unpack what they're doing. So if you guys want this, I'm opening up for a conversation, uh, but subject to availability as well. Uh, because quite tight at this moment. Uh, Eugene have, have done strategy session with me as well. I think it's a lot of fun. It is very tiring, but you will walk out feeling so much better. So yeah, that's that's all from my side. All right, and we uh on you know on behalf of Imran and myself, we once again we thank uh Civil Service Club for this opportunity for many uh speaking <coughs> opportunities all the way until July. There will be a new new speaking opportunities that I'll be renewing with Civil Service Club all the way until December. So do do look out for it. Ah, uh, photo taking. Nick Isa oh. says, okay, Imran, you take the photo lah. Take like this, or should we take without the? Uh, up to you, up to you, bro. Let's try one photo. I'll make the pro. The okay, let's photo. let's uh, let's on your video for those of you who can uh can be around to on your video. It'd be nice to see nice to see Vivian again. Yeah, Vivian, you managed to make it, huh? You say you couldn't. <laughs> All right, let's smile. All right, Ken. Thanks. Well, thanks, guys, for joining. If you have questions, you have my contact. Uh, you have my Instagram, Facebook. Just drop me a message. I hope it was a good session, and I hope it inspires you to not give up on your side hustle as well. Yeah, it's a lot and, of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Keep doing it. <laughs> Keep thanks, doing Eugene it. as well. Eugene yeah. for giving me this platform to share with you guys. Um, 
really happy that he's doing this series. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot of effort from Eugene to host this on a Saturday morning consistently. I was forcing myself out of bed one Saturday. Imagine for him. <laughs> so give him the support, guys. Yeah, thanks. All right, thanks, thanks everybody. And uh, if if you if you tune in late, uh, please uh, watch the replay at seoking.tv. Right. With that, we will end the. Stream.